live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Welcome back to London on the chilly banks of the River Thames here at Excel London. This is HP Discover 2016. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We've been here, Paul Gillen and I, for three days extracting the signal from the noise. Vish Malshand is here. He runs uh, product marketing and management at HPE. And Inga Erling is here from Werner, retail company. Um, really exciting uh, company with numerous sites, websites, uh, and, and presence across Europe. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Good to see you. We're talking storage, we're talking flash, all flash, acceleration, wheelhouse, we love it. What's the vibe, Vish, on the floor? You guys have been killing it in all flash. So all flash, Dave, we've been talking about this now for several CUBE sessions, right? And I think um, my view of the all flash and where it's heading, if that was your question here, was I think we've seen these um, waves of flash. Wave one back in 2012 was that performance wave, right? The likes of violin memory comes to mind at that time, where there was a small number of applications that required that critical performance and then justified the cost of the flash at that time. That was wave one. Wave two is the wave we're in right now, and I call it the affordability wave. In addition to the performance, we saw data reduction technologies, we saw larger capacity SSD drives, um, we saw improvements in power, cooling, density, customers reported administrative savings, so there was this economic wave that we're right now, I think, on the cusp of exiting to the third wave. And wave three, in my mind now, goes beyond the flash array, wave three um, is characterized by four attributes. First is around the acceleration of applications, and that includes compute, storage, network, right? It's across the board. Second is simplification. The world continues to move faster. You got to make it simple. People have other things to do than manage infrastructure. Third is managing your risk. That is access to the data, integrity of the data. And fourth is investments. Two elements of investments here, Dave. How do you invest into the IT asset that you're trying to purchase? And as that investment matures over time, how does it stay fresh and stay current? Okay, good. So we're going to dig into some of those, but before we do, let's go to Inga. Tell us a little bit about Varner. Yeah. Varner is a retail fashion company that is based in, with a headquarter in Norway but we are having uh, around uh, 1,600 stores across the northern part of Europe today. Um, we are having 12 different brands, so uh, they're both competing with each other and also supplementing each other. And, and obviously online, as any retailer, is driving a big component of your business. Can you talk about that shift, what's happening with digital and what role Flash has played? We are seeing that uh, the online business is uh, in the beginning, it will be growing quite fast, but uh, the main reason for us to, to go to Flash is that uh, the amount of data is growing and uh, with more and more stores, uh, we are in, in retail fashion, we are, we are having approximately more than one million unique items that we want to do big data analytics around. Uh, customer loyalty, it's also a huge driver regarding the amount of data that you want to analyze and you want to keep track of the customers, and then uh, all of us want to have a fast response when you're, when you're starting an application or whatever. You want to, to have the answer right away, and then you need the right storage. How is this changing the retail experience for your customers? Uh, I think that we are still in the beginning regarding the changes, but it will be more and more that uh, when you're going to a store, you're bringing your mobile device with you. The mobile device will be a companion you're going to use your device to get additional information. Uh, you're already today, you're using your phone to look at alternatives when you are in a store to uh, compare the goods that you're looking at, what are other stores doing, or is, is it a better offer somewhere else? But we, uh, in, in the retail fashion, we are looking at what this could give you additional uh, value or information about the product. Since we are in fashion and producing clothes, uh, information about uh, where is actually the garment being produced, um, what is the fabrics in the, the garment, 
uh, everything that you want to know as a customer, you want to know more and more. Why, why are you here talking about Flash? We discovered that we, we ended up to, up to have a problem regarding how far could you actually scale up with a number of disk drives. Uh, you needed to have something that had a better response time. Uh, it's more or less that you're expecting all our employees expect the same as all of us is expecting at home. When you're clicking on the app on the, the telephone, you want instant response. To be able to actually do a extreme complex analytics in a database, you need to have, one thing is what could you do in the memory of, of this database server or the application servers, but you also need to look up something that is stored in a database that, that is stored in a storage system and then you need a storage system is extremely fast. And, and it's really an analytics play is why you, you, you sort of went to, to Flash. And what are you doing with the analytics specifically? Are you kind of replacing slow data warehouse? Are you bringing transactions and analytics together? It's, the, the, the amount of analytics is growing year by year. And uh, at the same time, uh, moving and building more and more on a virtualized platform that is also increasing the demands for to have a storage system that is fast. Uh, the growing amount of data in general, since we are a fashion company, we have a huge uh, picture libraries that is adding more and more. So getting the deduplication, uh, the compression ratio that uh, you are able to get in a flash system. So one thing is that to get the performance impact on larger and larger databases, but all there is also how to cover the rest of the business that you're also you, having in data center. What are, you, what are you seeing in terms of uh, deduplication and compression or data reduction rates? Yeah, it's uh, up to 1.9 okay. in the overall when you're taking, combining all of the different type of uh, compression rate that you are having in the system. Deduplication alone is uh, uh, up to 1.3. But okay. uh, in, in overall, we're seeing the 1.9. And as a result, your cost of flash is at parity with spinning disk, lower than spinning disk? Uh, more uh, or less, when we did the last investment, we saw that we didn't have any really good alternatives. Uh, you're having the cost saving everything from the electricity bill, yeah. uh, the space actually to, to put up the system, the number of racks that you need. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the prices was, we are seeing more and more that it was competing and like we mentioned that the new offerings that is coming uh, with the, the three center gigabyte, it will completely change. So uh, it's close enough and simpler yeah. and more, of, more efficient from an energy standpoint that it doesn't have to necessarily even cross over for yeah. you. So, so in the last we were running three different platforms and uh, with the new offerings we, we had the possibility to, to move on and do the consolidation again that we could have a mixed workload. Uh, you're getting more and more into the situation where you had to build one virtual, uh, one environment for the virtual environment, one for a standard clustering uh, environment, one for databases. Uh, with the all flash and the power that you're getting there, you can actually more flexible move the data around. This, this sort of goes back to what you were saying about simplicity. So how is uh, uh, how is Werner seeing simplicity? payoffs from the flash investment. You know, and this in the industry that they're in, right? I mean, just coming off the Thanksgiving holiday here in the US, you know, we see I think we saw a record year with online sales, and I think the retail outlets now are trying to marry, right? Uh, one interesting example that we saw was um, uh, a customer comes into the store, of course he can see and feel the material, but they can take a photograph of him and they can now simulate how different looks and clothes look on him at the store with someone giving you that advice, right? So it's not yourself looking at, a, at an image on a computer screen that's there in the store, but then there's the person that's there that can advise you and say, that looks really good on you, that doesn't look so good on you, right? Now, to do that kind of infrastructure in a store, right, really means that you've got to have very simple operations. You've got to really be able to allow people to focus on those kinds of attributes of what a customer looks like versus the infrastructure. So, but what's, what's simpler about managing Flash? Why is Flash simpler to manage? It is simpler to manage because traditional systems required a lot of tweaking. They required the database guy to talk to the storage guy, to talk to the networking guy. Now, many of our customers are reporting that that has gone away. So the bottlenecks. It works, it just works. There isn't the need to constantly change, tweak, respond to spikes. And, and Flash just takes that all away. 
They can go focus on higher value things. Talk, talk about the risk mitigation uh, dimension. Now, as you're collecting more and more data, uh, to do data analytics, for example, to drive those insights, how do you protect that data, right? And you know, we've all heard about um, break-ins here in the last few weeks on data security, data breaches. Um, so that protecting the access to the data is very key. That's a managing your risk there, especially if you keep all this information, right? And then how do you protect that data over time in the wake of disasters, failures? And so, you know, as that data bank grows larger and larger, it becomes a valuable asset. You don't want to get into the wrong hands and you don't want to lose it. So, uh, Inga, coming back to your, um, your, your platform, I see from the notes of your, you guys gave a presentation the other day, um, you're predominantly uh, running, well you're a, a VMware shop, running Windows file clusters, Exchange and, and SQL as your database, yeah. right? So what kind of impacts have you seen, even at a high level as a result of, of Flash? Roughly performance, business outcomes, anything you can share? I think that uh, the most important thing is uh, that we are seeing is that we could uh, simplify the platform regarding we, we did need to consider what kind of uh, storage do we need to deploy a specific type of uh, application. If we want to spin up a new database now, we could just spin it up. Uh, we could use the, the standard automatization tools that we're having and they don't need to consider are we on the right storage or not. Uh, do we need to deploy this on a specific uh, virtualization farm or do you need to have dedicated hardware? Uh, what is the delivery time? Today we could just uh, decide that we, we need a new system tomorrow and we can spin it up today. One of the benefits of Flash is, is a reduction in, in duplication in uh, database copies. Have you yeah. found that that has been a uh, significant benefit for you? Yeah, based on the overall figures, we're seeing that we're getting a huge benefit regarding the deduplication ratio, uh, the 1.9 ratio that I mentioned earlier. If I, if well, I can so, add to that, so, to that point. Less deduplication, I'm thinking of just having to create copies. copies of the database for, sure. for development and no, sharing. And sharing the same copy as opposed to having to create copies. Yeah. So, so, um, more or less we are restoring, or we are actually copying data around, we are copying production data to do real time. Mm -hmm performance testing before we're deploying new releases into the production. Uh, we don't have exact figures how much is actually saving us. That's perhaps but the you're, other But you're figures. still making copies as you used to as opposed to sharing out of that single Yes, we are more or less. Data set, yeah. And that, that's also due to time that we want to be sure that everything is working and. Uh, yeah, okay, but so you're. IT guy, you're conservative. That's we got to yeah. make sure. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, break it's, it first. It's an but, emerging use case. But but it is an emerging use case, and that's yes. what I wanted to ask you, Vish. Are you starting to see people? Certainly in development, you've seen that. Are you seeing it sort of widely, or we're is it seeing so more and more customers now recognize that Flash enables them to do something that they could not do before, right? It's enabled a new way of working. So the notion of copies of database, more and more customers are starting to realize that. There's performance headroom in the flash. If they use snapshot to make the copies, they don't have to make full physical copies. So there's a data reduction element of using snapshots. And then there's, of course, the protection uh, of those different copies by fencing them using some kind of QoS software so that you ensure one doesn't overtake the other. How about um, in terms of, of, of what you're seeing with regard to uh, the way in which Flash is impacting the business. So, so you had talked about wave one being performance, and I'm actually cu curious as to how, what in Inga's situation, is that performance or is it accelerating apps, and what the difference is there? Yeah, and I think the um, wave one was performance as an overriding, as an overriding consider consideration, right? And without really considering all the other elements. Wave two said, I, I need the performance, I need the affordability, I need the data services, right? And that made it a little more mainstream because it brought three elements together. And now wave three, we're saying, look, it goes beyond because I'm now looking at accelerating all of my applications as opposed to just my performance critical mm -hmm. applications. In fact, one of the customers we talked to, Dave, said, we really did not need the performance of Flash, but because of the administrative savings, 
because of the reduction in backup windows, we moved to flash. There were other reasons as opposed to performance moving to flash. Yeah, well, once you go flash, you never go back. Uh, so, okay, and, and let's talk about the competition. Did you look at other systems? Are you a pure HP shop, HPE? Uh, we're also running other storage systems, but that is for uh, specific applications. Uh -huh. uh, but since we have been a long time HPE customer, and uh, the experience that we had with the earlier edition of 3PAR, it, uh, we did compare the prices and we looked at all the alternatives, but uh, the the is quite obvious that the, the, the 3PAR was the best platform so for us. So when you were doing hybrid, I saw in the, your presentation, you were, you were doing hybrid, but it was just too cumbersome, you were moving stuff around and tiering, it wasn't, wasn't working for you. Was that a 3PAR hybrid or was it an, an alternative? Uh, the, the solution we had there was running on the P9500. Uh, and there is more, more or less the complexity regarding smart tiering, uh, storage pools, licensing issues. Uh, so uh, that's one of the benefits with the, the new three parts of all flash that you, you don't have any of those restrictions regarding to look into what is the license and what is the storage pool they are running on. Just collapse all that. So yeah. So I get it. let's let's talk about the competition here. So three par came out. The interesting thing about three par is you had a full stack, robust, hardened storage service stack. Uh, that gave you an advantage. Uh, obviously EMC's a, a leader here, Pure, the, the upstart. NetApp is now you know, using its install base to, to convert to Flash. Where do you see your competitive position, Fish? So I see our competitive positioning growing because we're bringing now several elements together. Um, if you look at acceleration, for example, right? How do we take the next wave of application acceleration? Well. Uh, one of the things we're showcasing on the floor this week, Dave, is something called 3D Cache. And it's technology with HP and Intel around 3D Crosspoints where we can now accelerate all flash arrays. Right, and so that's one area of acceleration. Um, accelerating the network. We've just announced this week as well a whole slew of 32 gig fiber channel infrastructure. 25 gig ethernet's on the horizon. And so when we can bring all of the elements across compute, networking and storage together to deliver that application outcome, that's a strength that very few companies can match. Your brethren at uh, HP, uh, it's called Hewlett Packard Labs, I thought it was HPE Labs, but anyway, the science says Hewlett Packard Labs, regardless, they're working on some cool stuff, potentially to replace Flash. Are you expecting that? Are you just assuming Flash is here until somebody proves that there's something better? Or what? I think that's the rise of what some people are calling now storage class memories. Mm -hmm. um, on the server side, we have also seen something that we call persistent memories, right? And I think we're seeing sort of a collapse of the memory hierarchy. And, and uh, we're fully expecting there's going to be a solid state 2.0 with storage class memories. I don't think Flash is dead. I think Flash continues to have a life. And the early phases of storage class memory, in my mind, Dave, are going to be focused in more memory use cases, like um, expanding the size of the cache. Um, uh, like in the case of persistent memory on the servers, we're also seeing uh, byte addressability on something like SQL, SQL Server 2016 to drive mm -hmm. acceleration. So if we can bring now the acceleration in servers, the acceleration in storage, with storage class memory, the network, you've got to trace that end-to-end -end path of the I.O. across the entire stack. Okay, so, so Memristor maybe starts in the system, so maybe someday it gets cheap enough to impact Flash. My, my prediction is that you're going to see storage class memories, different kinds of technologies start first with the memory use case. It's going to be larger capacity than traditional DRAM memory. It's going to be persistent, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, and it'll be lower priced. Right? but not low priced enough yet to go replace the flash tier, at least not in initially. Well, right? because of the consumer volumes especially, well, right? Over time as volumes increase, as production levels increase, you'll see it drive prices down, drive capacities up, and then it'll go down the stack that would, way. You, would you agree we're a decade away from that? From a, in terms of impacting, flash, replacing flash? As, I don't as think it's as far as a decade, Dave. Stuff. You think it's sooner? I, I think it's five years. Okay, good. We'll, we'll follow up, you, me, and Floyer on that conversation. <laughs> okay, all right. I'd love it. Uh, gentlemen, we're out of time. Thank you so much, Thank Vish you. and Inga, for coming on theCUBE. It was great Thank to have you. you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Paul, Gillen, and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from the Docks of London at Excel London. This is theCUBE. Be right back. <laughs>